Hi, this is Andrew Reversa with Impact Soundworks, and today I'd like to show you a new and unique instrument, the show drum. This is a tuned drum made from tempered steel, it's all handcrafted, and it was played using a variety of different mallets and implements like brushes, fingers, timpani mallets, etc. Though it's not nearly as big as some of our other releases like uh, Bravura Scoring Brass or Shredded Drums, it's nonetheless uh, very evocative, great for atmospheric music in particular. Uh, I find it very inspiring myself. So let's dive right in and check out the show drum. So what you just heard was the small rubber mallet. If you click on the articulations menu, you'll see that we have a bunch of different things to pick from. So let's see what the brushes sound like in comparison. It's a very different character from the small rubber mallet. Or let's check out the uh, fingers. This kind of sounds somewhere in between the rubber mallet that I used and the brushes. For all these articulations, we recorded a variety of round robin samples for variation. So if you hit the same key, you hear a natural variation in the attack of each note. We also have two mic positions. There's the shotgun mic, and then we have the stereo XY pair. The Stereo XY picks up more of those upper frequencies, but a bit less body from the instrument in comparison to the shotgun. Let's turn down the XY. And then once again, we can go back. And actually you can disable the mics with just a single click. We'll enable those again. Up here at the top, we have some fairly standard controls for volume, tuning, transposition, uh, velocity to volume offset. When you turn that up, basically how hard you hit the key affects the volume of the instrument more. And when it's at zero, velocity doesn't matter at all. Most of the time you want that turned up more. So the instrument feels a little bit more dynamic. And then we have offset, which will actually chop off some of that attack sound from each note. Uh, we'll do this with the brushes just as an example. That might sound like it's filtering the sound, but actually what's happening is it's playing it a certain number of milliseconds into the sample. When you take away that bright attack, what you get is more of the pure tone with just some of the harmonics. If you uh, move this knob, you can see the offset amount at the bottom. And then there are some useful envelopes here. So if you want to have the sound ring out more, you can turn up the release. Or maybe you want it a little bit more percussive. So we could turn the sustain down and turn the decay down. In case you can't already tell, I think this is a great instrument to use for sequences and arpeggios. Then there's a pitch envelope, which is useful if you want to have a little bit of pitch bending uh, on each note. So I'll set the uh, decay pretty low. We'll turn this back to normal for the amplitude volume envelope. And then let's just add a little bit of pitch depth here like this. Or if we want that snappier, we can reduce the decay. And maybe increase the pitch depth even more. That can create some nice spacey sounds for sure. And speaking of spacey, let's check out the effects because this is where the instrument really comes to life. I'm gonna turn on the delay and you can change the sync here. We'll do Maybe a uh, dotted eighth, perhaps. There we go. Some panning. And then maybe a reverb. You can go with a uh, cosmic reverb here. Change the filters. 
like so, and then turn that down, and we'll see how this sounds, and I can always mix it up later. We could go even a bit further, more reverb, more delay feedback, maybe turn down the mix a bit. And the timing could be more like just quarter notes. Now let's say that you find some of the frequencies are all overly resonant for your taste or for your mix. I recommend using the low mid frequency here. Uh, we can narrow the Q and then sweep the frequencies until we find the right one. That's a little bit too much out of it. So maybe something like just a subtle like a minus three. Of course, that's also going to depend on what mallets you use. For example, if I go back to the uh, timpani mallet, this one is a lot more resonant in those low frequencies, so I have to keep that in mind. Uh, I'm gonna go back to, let's try brushes back. So this is gonna be a different harmonic profile. Very, very beautiful. So let's check out the arpeggiator. So this is a very powerful polyphonic arpeggiator and sequencer. I'll turn it on and by default, it's going to use my input MIDI pitch. So I'm just gonna play a uh, C chord inversion. And it's gonna play those notes in the arpeggiator. Or if I play a five note chord, it's going to play the chord that I hold. We have a uh, chart down here that has the velocity and then the length for each note. So this could be shortened quite a bit. Uh, for simplicity, let me reduce this to just four steps for now. And I'll play a four note uh, A chord. Now I'll lengthen the third note. And then maybe we'll do an emphasis on the first and third. Maybe a little too much emphasis. How about this? This is really cool for uh, inspiration. You know, just holding chords and playing around with the table here, you can get some really neat effects. Uh, so let's say maybe something like this, and then we could have the notes get shorter. How about that instead? With the gate mode, instead of re-triggering the sound, it's actually going to perform a rhythmic gate. And for this to be audible, uh, since these particular notes and articulations are pretty short, uh, I'm going to change the sync to something way faster. So we'll do like a 30 second, for example. To be able to hear this, I'm gonna use a, a 16th sync. So you can hear what the gate's doing there. Also, I'm gonna take down the delay feedback just a bit, although it is really, really cool. If we turn the gate back off again, uh, you'll see there's also a use MIDI velocity. So instead of using the velocity table, it'll just ignore that. And instead, it will only use the length table. And it will just use the velocity of the notes that I play. So if I play lightly, there you go. And if I play a uh, harder chord,
then the played notes will be louder. Now if we turn these off, both use MIDI pitch and use MIDI velocity, then this essentially turns into a uh, polyphonic sequencer. So here's a pitch table and you can go up and down uh, 12 semitones. We just have a simple rhythmic pattern. And let me just vary this up a little bit. And length, maybe something like this could sound cool. I don't know, just kind of doing it at random. And let's add a few octave jumps in there. And I'll play a sequence based on that A, or I can play a D. Or I could sort of build a custom arpeggio here. change the sync up maybe to a triplet eighth. And, you know, playing around with the effects, you can create quite a few different sounds. There's also a microtuning feature and this is pretty powerful as well. With microtuning, you can change the tuning of each individual note in a scale. So let's say we're doing key of E. Each of these 12 notes represents, uh, so here we have, this would be E. Then this would be F. And so on and so forth. So you can do all sorts of interesting tuning. Turn the arpeggiator back on. There are some great inspirational possibilities there using the microtuning and the arpeggiator. And again, we've got a couple uh, great presets, more than a couple great presets actually, uh, like 432 hertz, just intonation, we've got some Middle Eastern scales and the ice face tuning, which is pretty cool. That affects uh, just the black notes essentially up half a semitone. We've got a couple other articulations as well, and these are more percussive in nature, the untuned strikes and then the untuned brushes. So here are some of the strikes just with no effects, no reverb. And these little ticks and tapping sounds are really nice for creating percussive grooves. And here are the brushes. Uh, but in addition to these sounds, we also have the designed category. And this is where things get really interesting because these were processed offline to create all sorts of uh, textural and ambient sounds. So here we have the temple bells. Let's check out uh, Winds of Creation. I really like this one. It's almost the keyboard split. You've got the sort of ambience in the left hand and then some sustained sounds in the right hand based on the tonal material. Or how about the uh, Rhodesia patch? Another really nice one. Almost like a Rhodes piano, hence the name, uh, but very, very playable. How about Chamber of Dreams? Mm -hmm. 
All of these design sounds I think you'll find very inspiring for film, TV, and games, along with the instrument itself. The show drum is available now in contact format, but it also comes with a whole bunch of unlocked waves. In fact, the entire library is available as wave. So you can design the sounds further, tweak, mangle, reprocess, all to your heart's content. You can pick up the show drum for just 50 bucks at impactsoundworks.com. And you can also get bundles with some of our other similar instruments like Resonance Emotional Mallets, which is uh, similar instruments that were made from wood and glass and metal and stone. And then we also have Celestia, which is more on the synthetic side of things. Anyway, I hope you find a lot of inspiration with the show drum. I am very much enjoying it myself. You'll definitely hear it in my music coming up. So this has been Andrew Reverso with Impact Soundworks, and I will see you next time. Thank you.